What if I end walked all of Final Fantasy XIV? I'm Nick of Fantasy. Dawn Trail is around the corner, and like most players, I wanted to give Endwalker a proper send off before we head out to the New World. And also, like most players, I wanted to do one final walkabout through the Endwalker zones before the 48 hour maintenance. But I wanted to go further. I was curious to see how long it would take and how far it would be to walk through all of the Final Fantasy XIV zones. So I did it. I Endwalked through all of Final Fantasy XIV zones in game and in real life. What is Endwalking? If you don't remember, Endwalker is the buff our character gets at the end of the expansion. As we make our way through the final area of Ultima Thule, we hear the voices of our friends encouraging us, helping us not to fall into despair. So pretty much RP walking. I'll be using my Fitbit to keep track of my time and distance as I walk. I was able to determine roughly how many miles, hours, steps, and calories burn to Endwalk Final Fantasy XIV. And as a little bonus, how much weight I lost. Will I tell you my starting weight? No. No, I will not. A couple disclaimers. Keep in mind, all of this data is extremely inaccurate. Fitbits and smartwatches are never really accurate, so whatever data I got is what I got. Also, keep in mind, I was holding a controller throughout the walk, and since I didn't swing my arm as much, that already affected my data. Also, I did not take this walk too seriously. I legit did this for fun and took breaks and rested when I needed to. Now, without further ado... No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. I'll start things off by breaking down the pathing for A Realm Reborn. A Realm Reborn zones connect together pretty nicely with the exception of uh, Lanasha. But Lanasha itself was pretty easy to walk through. It's basically a giant circle. From Linsola Minsa, I took a ferry to Thanalan, went up through to Mordona, and then up through Corthus. And of course, if I'm going to go to Corthus, I can't not go to Hoshaphon's grave. From Corthus, I made my way through the Black Shroud. I did stop and pray at every godstone in the Realm Reborn areas, only because I thought it was something interesting to do during my walk. Next up was the Heaven's Word Zones. This is where things got a little bit more complicated. I started off in Ishgard and just made my way through the foundation with no trouble. Then I walked through the Corthus Western Highlands. From the Highlands, I walked up and through the Dravonian Forelands, then up to the Churning Mist. Since the Churning Mist dead ends, and I wanted to avoid backtracking and traveling with mounts as much as possible, I decided just to fast travel back to the Forelands and then make my way south and walked into the Dravonian Hinterlands. And the Hinterlands made my way past the ruins into Idleshire. Idleshire would have been a super simple, quick and easy walk, but I wanted to make things a little bit more interesting for myself other than going from one entrance to the other entrance. So I just did a lap around Idleshire. Once back in the Hinterlands, made my way south up to the Gubu Library. From here, I had to find a way to get to the Sea of Clouds. And I know you can get to the Sea of Clouds through the Corthus Western Highlands. But to get there, I had to walk through this cliffside. But you can't walk through the cliffside, so the only way forward was to mount up and fly around the cliffside just to get back to the Corthus Western Highlands. Once back in Corthus, I walked across the plateau up to this frozen dragon. The only way to walk the rest of the map was to drop down. So I decided to drop down at the frozen dragon, back to River's Meet, up the path, and then connecting over to the Sea of Clouds. The Sea of Clouds was my least favorite map to walk. Only a few islands connect together nicely, and for the most part, I had to get it back on my chocobo just to make it from one landmass to the other. After making my way to Camp Cloudtop, I went back to Ishgard through the pillars and made a walkabout through the pillars. I made sure to stop at Fort Temps Manor, and then made my way back to the airship landing to get to Azasla. Azasla is one of my least favorite maps considering how it's pretty ugly, especially with the weather conditions. And I never really liked the elegant aesthetic either. But after walking through this map, I did get a little bit of appreciation for the aesthetic, even if it's ugly. 
The four quadrants are connected together pretty nicely with some nice teleport spots, and I entered the walk where you would meet Tiamat for the first time. I thought about flying up to the flagship and then walking across the flagship, but I didn't really see any real reason to do so, so I took a pass on that. Next up was the Stormblood Zones. Walking through Stormblood was the easiest maps to walk through. I started off in Kugane and considered making it a little bit more interesting by walking through other paths and alleys, but I decided just to go down the market, past the castle, and then back through the Kugane Tower just to get to the Ruby Sea. There was two options to pass the Ruby Sea. I could have just swam from one point of the map to the other end of the map, but that would have just been super boring, especially for me. So I ended up walking from one island to another, walking along the coastline again, up to the entrance of Asim Step. Again, once in the Asim Step, I could have simply just walked from one entrance to the other, but that would have been super boring. So just to make it a little interesting for myself, I did a lap around the Dawn Throne. I thought about adding to my pathing of walking past the House of the Crooked Coin, but I didn't see any real reason to do so, so I opted out of it. On the day I was walking through Yansho was the same day as the maintenance, so I got as far as I could until the game kicked me out. I got as far as the House of the Fierce. From there, I swam through the secret tunnel, down the pathing of Yansha, and walked to the docks to the Dome and Enclave. Like Idleshire, there wasn't much to walk around with the Dome and Enclave. So I just kept things simple and just walked from one point to the donation box. I thought about making things a little bit more interesting and going to the koi pond, to the farm area, down to the schoolyard, but again, I didn't see any real reason to do so other than to add more time to the walk. Fast traveling to Gurbania, these maps were the easiest maps to walk. They took no time at all. Since the fringes and the peaks are split into two zones, I just walked through the fringes connecting to the peaks and then from the peaks to the locks. When working out the pathing for the locks, I had two options. I could have walked from the castrum all the way up to the entrance to the Alamigo dungeon, but that would have been super boring. I wanted to make the destination in the locks a little bit more interesting, so I decided to end the walk at the Royal Menagerie. I followed the path down the southern part of the map, up the stairs into the Alamigo quarter, and made my way to the attendant to get into the Royal Menagerie. And with that, Stormblood is done. Similar to Realm Reborn, the Shadowbringer maps connect pretty well. There's a few areas where I had to fast travel from one point to the other, but it wasn't that much of a hassle. From the Crystal Tower doors, I walked down to the markets, up the Rotonda, past the Crystalline Mean, up to the Amaro Keep. From there, I took an Amaro to Amarang. With Amarang split and no real way to connect one zone to the other, once I walked down to the southern point of the map, I got on my chocobo, flew over the mountains, and then walked the rest of the zone. Lake Lane was a zone I knew I would have to pass through twice. I was trying to decide which zone to visit next. I had considered going up the path into the Ritika Greatwood, but I opted to go to Ilmeg first. I had bad luck with the weather when I was walking through Lake Lane, so most of Lake Lane was foggy. I had hoped to get some nice shots of the Crystal Tower all lit up at night, but I didn't. Once in Ilmeg, it was a simple walk, just following the path all the way down to Wolkendorf to say hi to Seto. I was lucky that the fog did not follow me into Ilmeg because I got some nice shots of the fairy castle. With Ilmeg complete, it was back to the lake lands to Fort Job, walking up the path to the Ratika Greatwood entrance. Passed through the Greatwood with no issue, and decided to take a stroll into the Ronka Ruins. I really hope we do more things with the Ronka Ruins in the future. With that done, I took another Amaro to Calusia. With Calusia being another map that's a split map, I saw no reason to walk through the upper half of Calusia, so I just walked right past right to the shipyard into the Tempest. The only complicated thing about walking through the Tempest was going through the underground pathing that connects to Amaran. Walking up to Amara is one of my favorite scenes of this game. I can't get over how pretty the scenery looks here. With the first complete, it's now time for the Endwalker Zones. I started off in Yilamad, walking up the path into Razahan. From the entrance of Razahan, I walked around the plaza, around the market, and made my way to the airship landing. From there, I teleported to Camp Broken Glass in Garlemald. Walked up the path, past Terrarium, through the ruins of Garlemald, into the moon. The moon was another zone where I had to get a little bit creative with my pathing here, 
because there is one part of the brand that's broken that you can't walk past. It looks like you can, but you can't. So I had to get on my chugabo, walk past one small section, and then walk the rest of the way to the Best Way Borrows. I opted out making a grand tour of the Best Way Borrows and just went to the tribe zone and just took a lap around there. From the moon, I went to the past and walked around the floating islands of Elpis. I made the mistake of passing through the Hungry Gardens and got mauled by a couple Marlboros. From there, I teleported to the docks of Old Charlian. Instead of walking past straight through the Ithrit Plaza to the gates of Labyrinthos, I decided to do a grander tour of Old Charlian, walking up to the studium, back through this main city, through the residential district, and then up to the Restrada to the entrance of Labyrinthos. Labyrinthos was my least favorite zone to walk. It's another one of those split maps, and the first half isn't so bad. It was the second half that was my least favorite. Walking through the second half of Labyrinthos was the most uninteresting stroll of this whole walk. From Labyrinthos, I took the Ragnarok to Ultima Thule, and this was it. This was the final leg of the walk. I just had to get from the Ragnarok up to the Rainbow Stairs. As intimidating as this walk looked, it wasn't so bad. This was probably my favorite leg of the walk. Something about Ultima Thule I never noticed was the green fireflies floating around. Once I got past base Omnicron, it was time for the final walk. This is where the end walk ends. If you need a push, I'll be right there behind you. Do not despair. You are not without allies. What we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. Upon the souls of they who have sacrificed themselves to pave the way for peace, we will never Abandon our cause. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others. Such victories are rarely won without sacrifice, but the prize is worth the price. For our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Save your tears for the morrow. You may be sure we will have ample cause to shed them, be they for joy or despair. From tragedy and sacrifice. We rise to greet a new dawn. A future shaped by the choices we made in ways we could never have foreseen. Yet miracles do happen, so let us pray and will our friends hope. Stop praying until I know they're safe. Let's finish this. And that's it. The end walk is over.
All that's left to do now is just to go back home and break down the data. So let's go do that. I was able to complete this walk in two weeks. Each session took up to or over an hour to walk. There was a few days I was able to do two sessions and on the final day I walked all of the inwalker zones. Taking breaks in between the final day took about three hours to walk just the inwalker zones. And this is what that data looked like. Total hours walked was 12 hours. Total miles was a little over 22 miles. Total steps was about 60,000. Total calories burned was 7,400. And the total weight loss was about five pounds. Which after a quick Google search, losing five pounds in two weeks can be a bit dangerous depending on the body type. I ate my normal meals and I did eat some fast food a few times, so I didn't change much about my lifestyle other than walking every day. Looking over the data, there's a few things I wish I did differently. Walking with a game controller is not ideal. It definitely skewed the numbers. The most optimal way about this would have been to record my character walking first, then playing it back and walking with the footage. Kind of like those treadmill scenic walking videos. Because Don Trail is around the bend, I decided to record and walk at the same time thinking it would save time. I like to think it did, but I'd be willing to give this another shot to see how the data adds up. I'd also fix my pathing. There were several moments I got lost with my HUD off. I wanted to have a clean view to record my footage, so a lot of my walking was based off of memory and a map on my second screen. I know I could have covered a lot more of the zones I walked. There were several areas I did not bother to visit simply due to time. I did enjoy this little experiment though. It was cool taking a stroll through the world again and taking the sites one more time before the graphical update. Coincidentally, my free company also decided to have their own little inwalk to say goodbye to the expansion. It was only the inwalker zones and going through the zones with friends was really fun. So that's it. Inwalker is over. About two and a half years ago was the beginning of the end as we all panicked and threw death flags at every character we loved. We overcame despair and finally earned our beach episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, and all that jazz. I'll be taking a much earned rest, margarita in hand, and I'll see you all in the new world.